Everybody, it's Tyler here at the Michigan Championship, checking in team number 3538. RoboJack is number one in EPA here in Michigan, number eight in the world as well, too. RoboJackets have a couple wins under their belt this year already, are looking absolutely phenomenal. Take a look at RoboJackets. I have loved them all year, actually, for many years now. Uh, just a great machine. We'll be talking about this awesome intake area. I really love their arm and how they're placing. Big fan of their cycle times throughout as well, too. And we'll be talking about some of their custom wheels that they're doing with their swirl modules and more about programming. Let's learn more about RoboJackets here in Charge up on behind the bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University has over 25 pre-college camps and learning experiences available from computer science and engineering to inspiring future women engineers, leadership development, and first-based camps for first graders to graduating high school seniors. Magna and GM sponsor camp fee scholarships are available. Email ctaylor at kettering.edu for more information. If you're attending championships, come to the FUN and FRC Discord Meetup on Thursday, April 20th from 11 to 11.45 a.m. in Conference Room 360 CNF on the third floor. We'll have games, giveaways, time to socialize, and a chance to meet the FUN and FRC Discord staff. Get a reminder RSVP on the FUN or FRC Discords, and we'll see you at championships. Sophia, let's start to talk about on your robot. I know uh, you're doing something really cool with the, your swerve. You're using custom Colson wheels on that. Uh, so I'd love to hear more about that and some of your design process as well, too. Talk to me about it. Okay, so basically at the beginning of our season, we wanted to like really make a decision of like what like wheels and like what try to drive trim you want to do. So it was between tank and swerve. And so after a lot of testing, we found that swerve is more viable for us. And with that, the one thing that we really loved about Tank was that they had Colson wheels. We found the traction and like, especially on the polygar, it was a lot nicer. And so we decided to like custom do our wheels so they can work with our swerve modules. And so we did that so we can get onto the bridge a lot easier and also just move around a lot quicker and have more mobility. Another thing we also have with our design process is that we like, thought of like the game and like what we wanted and what we needed and one of those main things was like we didn't think we need um, pneumatics we thought it was a lot more hassle and just a lot more like time consumment so now after making the robot we made it around just making sure we don't have pneumatics at all uh, something I want to ask in regards to your, your swerve module and your wheels that you're using, um, there's a lot of uh, traction, obviously, with the swerve, uh, using Colson in particular. Have you had to, like, do anything to, like, almost, like, compensate? Like, do you have too much traction with swerve? No, honestly, I a lot of it's actually been pretty great with it. So we have have been running it since the beginning of the season, and it's been going really well. Let's move, keep moving on this robot here. We're going to talk to Caroline. It's going to talk more about your arm and what you have to bring in. Uh, like I said, I'm a huge fan of RoboJacket's arm this year, so I'd love to hear more about the composition of it uh, and uh, any iterations you might have gone through, too. Okay, so this is a virtual four bar. Um, it's basically the same as a normal four bar, except it's able to move 360 degrees. Um, so that is our mid scoring position, if you want to know scoring positions. Um, we have stow, mid. Um, stow, mid, high, and then we can also have transit and then score from the ground. Um, we, decided, we, de we decided to do it at this angle because it gives us the ability to score from, to score at mid and high at the same, by just extending the slide. When you're looking like from a packaging standpoint here and trying to get all this like worked into your robot well, like what considerations were your arm given? Because your arm takes up a big part of your robot. Did you have to design anything else around your arm? Um, so there are five main points that we wanted to focus on, such as like where, to, where we can score um, the human player station and the ground. So we just designed this with specific gear, if you can see these sprockets here, specific angles so that it can reach all of those different spots. Yeah, I really like uh, how your arm, it, it's essentially kind of a two-in-one, right? Where you're just getting uh, just all the benefits of both of them and able to get your cycle times down really quick is really, really cool. I know we'll talk a little bit more about uh, the programming that's gone into it uh, in a little bit as well, too. But let's keep moving on to Renzo, who's going to talk about your uh, intake. We've seen the wheel spinning here the whole time, so I'd love to hear more about uh, just how that's worked out for you. And something I'd love to ask, too, we've seen a, a couple of robots with kind of similar arms, and they have a little bit smaller intakes on it. When you were analyzing the game, uh, why was this with intake best for you? Because when I see you pick up you know, from the substations, you're doing it so quickly and so well. Right, so um, I'll actually run you through some of our 
previous iterations. Uh, one thing that we really wanted to make sure to do this season is have uh, just iterations to test on week one, which is what this one is. We made this within the first week of the of kickoff. And what we found with this one, uh, this intake in particular, is that it could intake cones and cubes pretty well, but the issue was scoring them. Uh, so uh, the reason that we have the intake curved like this is that it lets us pick up cones and also score them at an easier angle to line up for our drive team. Um, and we don't really have an issue with the size because uh, we, we actually prefer it be bigger so that we can just get faster cycle time, just less aiming that we have to do. It just helps our drive team out a lot. And that was, that was the goal in the design process, just get as fast cycle times as we possibly can. The way we have it set up in the code is that it'll stay idly spinning at a lower RPM in the uh, same direction as it previously was spinning. So right now it is spinning for cone intake. Uh, and right now it's spinning for cube intake or cone uh, outtake. Can we see a cube come in and just demonstrate yeah, how sure. that process works a little bit? Let me... Okay. Yeah. And then you can spit that out for me. Okay. And by default now, it's already spinning in favor of picking up a, um, a cone. And take this one out, don't spin it, and pop, uh, pop the cube back in if we still have it. You'll see it'll just pick it up on its own without being without the intake of uh, the input of the operator. I really like that thought process that you put into it as well too. Uh, you know, strategy-wise, obviously we're seeing you pick up from the human players most of the time. Yes. Are you able to pick up from the ground as well too? Yes, we can. Uh, if you can show them the ground preset really quick. So uh, we can pick up from the ground, but the issue with this in particular is that it just takes more time to line up. It's less straightforward. Uh, and we do it in our autonomous section, which he'll talk more about. And we do it in um, at the beginning of the match. We like to take the remaining uh, remaining cones and cubes on the floor. But apart from that, we yeah, it's just. I think that's a great transition to go to Nish yeah. talk more about programming and what this has gone into this robot. I know we'll showcase a little bit about your pathing, uh, and then as well too, I'd love to just hear more about your auto modes and how you've in implemented them. Sure. So. Uh, in the middle of the season, we kind of realized that we were going to need to use some sort of pathing application for more of our advanced autos. So uh, as, a, you know, as a programming team, we decided to use Helix Navigator, which uh, is an, essentially a pathing program um, which optimizes its paths based on waypoints that we set. So you can see this is for the bump auto that we run where we uh, score the cone, we score the preload cone, we grab a cube, we score the cube, and then we also pick up another cone. Uh, you can kind of see we are able, we use this application um, to generate our paths. Uh, another interesting thing we use is uh, when using, when interacting with the charge station, uh, we have a piece of code that uses the gyroscope, uh, specifically the pitch of the pigeon, uh, to better balance on um, the charge station. Uh, it basically essentially uh, uses the pitch value that we're getting multiplied by a constant proportion. And as we see the pitch get lower and lower, uh, as we balance better, that, that speed also in turn lowers and we're able to get that perfect balance. Uh, rotating away from the autos uh, with the teleop, something that we did a lot of, uh, personally myself, was uh, with this uh, arm, uh, when we'd, had, when we'd have our set points, sometimes we'd be a little off, like five or six degrees on our elbow. So we had to use a PID control loop and we, uh, we tested with that uh, PID control loop. We modified those values to try to get as close as we can and we can see like when he runs, uh, run a preset. We're able to get that elbow position right near exact. This is around 90-ish 90, 90 degrees and we're able to get it within one or two degrees. Uh, and then another interesting thing that we have is our gravity compensation code. Another thing that we saw was at certain times uh, while running our arm, it would sag due to gravity. So we have a mathematical equation that we apply uh, onto uh, the values that we're setting to ensure that you know, we're not seeing the, the elbow sag and it's kind of holding that position as well. 
Well, RoboJackets, thank you so much for taking time. Tell us more about your robot and your team. Your robot is absolutely phenomenal, so we wish you uh, best of luck here at MSC. Hopefully uh, beyond that in Worlds as well, too. Yeah. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Yeah, I just said, we're all about jank here at Fun, so it's all good. So. I mean, look at our duct tape. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. Kettering University is looking for talented robotics students who want to continue learning and innovating in a hands-on real-world experience format. Kettering University representatives will be at dozens of FIRST events this season, including the championship. Go to kettering.edu slash FIRST to see which events you can meet a Kettering University representative. FRC competition season is here. Submit your favorite moments to FRC Clips of the Week by each Sunday at discord.gg slash FIRST updates now. Also, the FRC Top 25 poll is open Sunday, 5 p.m. Eastern to Monday, 5 p.m. Eastern, where you can vote for your top 25 teams of the week at firstupdatesnow.com slash FRC Top 25. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash firstupdatesnow. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash firstupdatesnow. And check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.